Has Italy's president just saved his country and his continent from chaos and self-destruction? Or has Sergio Mattarella stoked an anti-establishment backlash by rejecting the will of the people? Mattarella was willing last week to overlook the creative writing in Giuseppe Conte's resume when Italy's new populist coalition offered up the unknown academic for the post of prime minister. But Mattarella flatly rejecting a voracious Eurosceptic as economy minister. Was the president right to refuse 83-year-old Paolo Savona, an economist who argued against the creation of the euro? We'll be asking our panel and sizing up the scenarios ahead. A technocratic government? Snap elections? Both? Many in Italy cast a blow-up-the-system vote when there's elections, the way they voted for Donald Trump in the U.S. or Brexit in the U.K. Under Italy's post-war constitution, drawn up with an eye to preventing another Mussolini from grabbing power, the president is preserving the system. But will it stop a crisis of legitimacy for that system? A system many would call the European Union. Today in the France 24 debate, we're talking about an Italy in crisis with us from Rome, Five Star Movement Member of Parliament, Manlio Di Stefano. Thank you for joining us. Here in the studio, we're with uh, Italian... Thank you for inviting me. Good evening. We're with Italian attorney Carlo Alberto Bruza. How are you, sir? Hi. How are you? We welcome back Famke Krummler of political and business consultants, <coughs> Open Cities. Hi. Nice to see you. And uh, our correspondent in Rome, Josephine McKenna, is with us as well. The France 24 debate on Facebook and on Twitter, hashtag F24 debate. Let's start with the latest <coughs> out with the political cabinet that would have featured in it the heads of the Five Star Movement and the Far Right uh, League in with a 64-year-old former director of fiscal affairs at the International Monetary Fund. Simon Harding has more. He's known as Mr. Scissors for his pro-austerity measures. The president has asked the former IMF director of fiscal affairs, Carlo Cottarelli, to form a government. A technocratic administration that would buy time, but also likely create the need for new elections. For since March 4th, Italy's political parties have been at an impasse to form a government, one that's likely to continue under Cottarelli, for he won't receive the backing of the League or Five Star Movement. The latest shake-up comes after President Sergio Mattarella used his constitutional right to veto the incoming Prime Minister, Giuseppe Conte's pick for economic minister, because he's a die-hard Eurosceptic. For the President, allowing Paolo Savona, who once called a Euro-German cage, is against Italy's interests. For the populist Five Star Movement and the League, the veto was undemocratic and driven by financial institutions. Let's say it. In this country, let's say it clearly. It is pointless going to vote because the ratings agencies choose the government. Financial and banking lobbies decide the government. Di Maio has called for the president's impeachment and the head of the league threatened mass protests. If another election is called, it's likely to happen in the fall, and polls currently show that the populist anti-establishment parties could gain control. Happened in the fall or perhaps even earlier, Josephine McKenna. I think it's unlikely before September. Uh, it seems from what uh, Carlo Cottarelli said today, uh, he will be presenting a program to the parliament and uh, trying to stay on course until the end of August, even if uh, his government program is rejected in a vote of confidence. One of the main issues is logistics here. Uh, the government has to give notice, several weeks notice of an election uh, and we're going into the summer months and that becomes much more complicated when people are on vacation. So I think it's probably unlikely we will see an election before September and, or October. But it's certainly uh, very unlikely we're going to see uh, Carlo Cottarelli ca carry this uh, new cabinet through till early next year. Very, very unlikely. And uh, before we look ahead to uh, what that election will look like, certainly very different from the one we had in March. Let's listen to the man under fire this Monday, Italy's president dismissing calls like the one you just heard uh, for his impeachment and reminding all that his job 
is to preserve the nation's institutions. La designazione del ministro dell'economia The nomination of the economy minister represents an immediate message of trust or cause for alarm for economic and financial actors. I ask for this ministry, an important political representative of the majority, who can't be seen as a supporter of an often repeated credo, who would provoke a likely or certain exit of Italy from the euro. Manlio Di Stefano, uh, do you buy that argument that uh, you would have had immediate uh, problems on the financial markets if you if they had gone ahead uh, with the nomination of that economy minister, Mr. Savona? This, this is totally uh, false, because if you look at the uh, typical mar market uh, uh, trends, they, they, they are scared about the instability. And that's why today the spread grow, uh, grown again, because the point is that obviously the markets and the investors need a stable country. So if you are able to create a government, a political government especially, obviously everything go, goes quiet. The problem is when, like yesterday, uh, everything collapsed and, and therefore the, the, the markets are following the same, uh, the same pattern. This is scaring for the Italian uh, citizen and the, the, this is scaring for also, I would say, the Italian democracy because uh, in the past it never happened that for political opinion, a minister will not be allowed to to, to take part of the governmental team. Is there no other candidate for the post of economy minister that you could have uh, put up to uh, the president? Um, Savona is a very respectable uh, uh, professor. Um, he just in the past criticized the Eurozone, saying that we uh, should they uh, stay in the Eurozone to fix it and to have the benefit that we will have from a fair Eurozone. So I think that there, there, there were no need to change this name. But I will, I will say that we suggested to President Mattarella other names in this last uh, uh, 20 days. But the point was, it was a political one. Because the, what we were asked for was a name that was exactly in the same line of the uh, uh, predecessors, so of the other uh, economy ministers, uh, uh, totally in line with the conservation of this kind of eurozone. What we said is that we cannot change a minister because his political ideas are, are not appreciated by the president of the republic. Because this is not on, uh, in, uh, on his prerogatives. The, the, the Italian uh, Republic is a parliamentarian republic. It means that the president of the republic can just uh, um, apply the constitution, protect it, protect it, but never interfere with the political orientation of the political government. So that's that's it has to be clear. Otherwise, we we, we, we confuse the the the, the friends uh, semi presidentialism to the Italian Parliamentary Republic. It is something right, different. Let, for let us. me put it. Let me put it to Carlo Alberto Bruza here. Um, there was a case in the past. We remember when Silvio Berlusconi tried to have his uh, personal lawyer absolutely uh, in the cabinet the that that was rejected it wasn't a political motive though as as we as we just heard from mr uh, di, di stefano do you agree with what you just heard from manuel uh, di stefano no, not totally not totally because uh, the um, in this situation the constitutional problem is not only the position of the president it's also the way to find the name of the president of the council because normally the president choose the president of the council is an article 92 after the president of the council choose the minister and he present the uh, the name of the president but in our situation we don't uh, mattarella give uh, uh, to di maio and salvini the project to find a government is not constitutional way is not constitutional way because but they 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 make a contract and after they propose the name 
to the president of the council. But isn't that a bit of a technicality? Because uh, what you have is a coalition, a coalition government. And so no, but the, the way it's another. Normally, you name the president, and after you choose and you organize the coalition, not the contrary. We, we are in a totally, because the, the Italian system is a peculiar system. I'm sorry, the, the Italian system uh, is a now a melting pot, a different way. They try, we is not only parliamentary, uh, we try to find also a little bit a president um, uh, conservation, a president uh, guard for the constitution. Is the situation all, all people, I was a, a candidate from Berlusconi, and they talk about with him to change the system, to try to find a president system, because uh, this is uh, equality in France. We have very good stability for the system majority and the president uh, uh, with this, uh, with, uh, uh, this kind of uh, way. In Italy, all the time with kind of system, Rosatello, Vitalico, now Rosatello, we are all the time in the situation uh, as uh, the uh, th third republic in France. If we don't find of, of great, a new of way political instability. Of, the, uh, of the election, we are all the time in the same situation. Manuel Di Stefano? Well, uh, whatever listen uh, never happened. I mean, we, uh, uh, President Mattarella, have chosen uh, President Conte. He went to him back with the list of ministers. So everything was respected in the way the constitutional uh, Article 92 says. So what I've listened is not the truth, uh, absolutely not. Uh, the point is that what was uh, done by my President Mattarella was to take some more responsibility uh, that he was not uh, uh, able to have. Uh, the, Constitution, uh, the Constitution say that he, he can just uh, uh, protect the constitutional values, but not, the pol but not going against the political will of the electors that in uh, the 4th of May voted Five Star Movement and Liga Nord with, the, uh, uh, with an overwhelming uh, result. It was 50, 51 uh, going to, together, the two parties. Which is and it? obviously, both in those parties, they decided also to change the political perspective that, was, uh, that we had in the past. So, right, so President Mattarella has to, res has to respect the result of the electoral uh, uh, momentum and apply and uh, create a government that is uh, uh, respecting these results. So this Re is the respecting the results, and I see, I see totally a, in line with the constitution. A disagreement, uh, that we have. a disagreement between Man, 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 Manlio Di Stefano and Carlo Alberto Brusa on this. The former pr uh, prime minister or president of the council, as it's called in Italy, Massimo Dilemma, caught on camera, by the way, speaking to the former president of the Italian Senate on the sidelines of a meeting of uh, their new left-wing party. If we go to the elections after the veto to Savona, the Five Star Movement and the League will take 80% of the votes. We'll be talking about autonomy, sovereignty of the Italian people, foreign interference. I hope that it will be fine. Famke Krummler, is, is that the truth out of the mouth of uh, Massimo de Lemmler? I mean, I would definitely argue that at this stage, let's say the Italian problem has just been delayed. It's it's unclear to me how the next election would see a significantly different outcome to today. And if at all, it would further um, further stimulate vote for for populist parties, because now you can argue that the first election the result of the first election wasn't respected. Um, clearly, the president leaned at quite far out of the window with, with, with his decision um, to not approve this appointment. So I think whenever Were you the next surprised election by happened, the president's decision? It, I mean, to the extent that this has never happened before for, for motives that are rather political uh, than, than constitutional to a certain extent, it is surprising. Um, but his argument at the end of the day was that... Um, there wasn't a debate about being in the euro or not in that it would be difficult to have to have this minister appointed without having had the debate in the election um, but it's, it's a difficult argument uh, jo josephine mckenna uh, your reaction to what we just heard there uh, from massimo dilemma as well uh, is this going to be fodder 
for the uh, these two populist parties as they head towards snap election? Because that is what it looks like is coming up. I think there is a real risk of that, Francois, because these uh, parties have not been tried in any shape or form in terms of their policies. There hasn't been any time for the public to assess whether they're good, bad or otherwise. And I think the other thing that really should be stressed is there's a complete disconnect between uh, what is going on in Brussels and what the government wants to achieve in terms of uh, lowering debt and what's going on on the ground. And people don't seem to see that the debt burden in Italy is a shared responsibility. It seems to be somebody else's problem. And so that seems quite uh, an opportunity for Five Star and the League to manipulate that, to say, why don't we change the rules in order to lower taxes so we'll all be better off. And that is what is precisely what Matteo Salvini was tweeting uh, just a short time ago. Matteo Salvini, and we'll hear from, from him shortly. Carlo Alberto Brusa, uh, by going to these snap elections, uh, is, it, is the president, in fact, playing into the hands of the Five Star Movement and the Liga? The situation is uh, really complicated now for the Salvini and the Di Maio because uh, they lose uh, a chance to have a government and they choose a Savona, and they know the position of the president was uh, uh, totally uh, in opposition. So you're saying they did it on purpose to try to trigger this snap election? Absolutely. Your reaction to that, Manlio Di Stefano, was this uh, something intentional? After all, this this alliance that uh, we've seen is not the one on which uh, your party ran. You. The, your partner, your junior partner there, the League, they were with Silvio Berlusconi during the campaign. Honestly, I'm sick and tired of listening to people saying that the problem was postponed or the Populist Party are, uh, were, were going to government. Uh, where, why are you scared about the electoral result? I don't understand. What's the problem? What's the problem of Five Star Movement or League and Ordered Government? What we said in the contract that we did for the election, what we said in our electoral program was just to fix the problem that the Eurozone has. Something that was said also by Macron, for example, your president. So could you please try to be respectable, respectful from Italian people and for Italian parties that are going to election and are trying to govern this country. I think this should be the base of the uh, political debate. Some respect for the people will. Well, Said that, uh, I think that this argument of the uh, 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 us trying to uh, co make collapse everything in, with, the, with Mattarella is it's a fake news. I mean, why sh sh shall we lose 80 days creating a government, creating a contract, just to go and make everything collapse. It makes no sense. Makes no sense. Uh, Manlio Di Stefano, I'm going to have to cut you off very briefly. I'm going to have to cut you off very briefly because we have to go to a quick break. We'll be right back. We'll get back to it. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate. Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate and uh, we're looking at what happens next, where an unprecedented coalition in Italy has been stopped in its tracks and uh, a, instead a technocratic uh, a prime minister has been named with uh, the prospect of snap elections looming with us to talk about it. From Rome, Five Star Movement Member of Parliament, Manlio Di Stefano. We welcome back as well Italian attorney Carlo Alberto Brusa, Fanca Krummeler of uh, political and business consultants, Open Cities, and uh, France 24 Rome correspondent, Josephine McKenna. Crises, nothing new to Italy, neither is anger with politicians and the political system. In this particular case, it's still too early to gauge whether the populace have gained or lost credibility in this crisis.
And uh, uh, on that score, uh, we heard uh, uh, one man who was uh, speaking and saying it would be a very, a very different election uh, next uh, t uh, time around. Uh, Silvio Berlusconi, of course, will be allowed to run. Last time he wasn't. He won't be in coalition with uh, the League, it seems. But he may have lost uh, his coalition partner from the Lega, who are certainly pondering a coalition ticket with the Five Star Movement, or so it sounds when you listen to their leader. Next election will be a plebiscite, a referendum between the old and the new, between people's rights and strong powers, masters of spread, masters of banks, masters of markets. Manlio Di Stefano, would you agree to a coalition with the League in a, in, during the campaign? No, the Five Star Movement um, never uh, make coalitions for the campaign and um, before the election. What we said in this uh, try that we, we made is to create a government coalition on a specific electoral program. So uh, it's, it's pretty different. So I think that we will run uh, alone. And uh, obviously, what have been done in terms of in terms of uh, a program will, it will stay there. So in case with the same electoral law, we will find in a new in the same situation that happened in the last election. Obviously, we will start from a from a good. Uh, from a good point already, that is the contract that has already been signed by Di Maio and uh, Salvini. So uh, I would exclude that we will run together. So the, you won't run together, what, Manlio Di Stefano? has been done. Will will stay you, there. Are you happy to go to uh, the, the, with the prospect of early elections? Reports suggest that uh, the Five Star Movement uh, didn't want the, this uh, triggering of, uh, of a snap election. Well, we have no no other chance. I mean, uh, we we were very happy to create the government and to give Italian people the possibility to improve their own life with our reforms. But unlikely, uh, it wasn't possible. So uh, we cannot accept any different government that was not uh, chosen by the Italian people. So obviously, the only possibility we have now is to run new elections as soon as we can. As soon as you can, uh, Josephine McKenna, what's the mood in Rome? Well, I think people are very divided about whether this is a good idea or not. They're certainly exhausted. They feel that uh, after this election, uh, that bitterly fought election campaign in March, uh, and 80 days, more than 80 days of this stalemate, people are really sick and tired of it and they want to see action, they want to see uh, change and, uh, of course, so far we're not seeing that and we're going to be in a holding pattern for some time now. A holding pattern, uh, Carlo Alberto Bruza, it's the fifth time in a row right now where the person who is the president of the council, the prime minister, is not the person who was voted for uh, at the polls. In fact, Silvio Berlusconi is the last uh, Absolutely. leader of a party to actually lead the government, uh, then lead the government. Uh, at this, again, there's the wonder of whether or not there's been a mistake here. I think there's a, uh, the consequence of the, uh, the system, election system. I repeat all the time, if we don't, Italy doesn't change the system election, we leave all the time the same situation. They, uh, Mr. De Stefano said, he, um, Mr. Battarella does not res no respect uh, the popular uh, choice. It's a completely fault because uh, uh, before the election, uh, Di Maio and Salvini had opposite, was in totally opposition. I mean, totally. It was impossible for them to think they go, they make a, a, a contract. It was impossible. And after you have a government with a two person in totally extreme, in totally opposition, so how do you fix that? How and they you... make a contract for the for Italy, and they want to say this is a new republic. So what kind this of a... what kind of electoral reform do you suggest? Normally, is a, in all party the the system that we go they give a, a, a insurance for a guarantee is a majority system for the parliament and a president with the popular election. 
This is the system for Italy. All people is a French. So you're suggesting a French I, system for Italy. Absolutely. It's a very good system. I am uh, I uh, teach many years in university. I talk about Berlusconi agree at the moment this kind of system. But after uh, some uh, council said no no, is a better the German system. It's for that that we have this uh, Rosatellum then normally the party win as uh, the prime minister. But uh, we try, we try after Berlusconi to find a new party with a majority we don't have, and we have all the time a technical government. We are in the same situation. I think if this government doesn't have the possibility to change the law, the election law, this is good for Italy. They don't change the next uh, election in September, October, we are in the same situation. We don't find a solution for Italy, and we are all the time in the economical, technical government. So here's the question, Famke. Is Italy weak because of this political gridlock that we see, or are its institutions strong? Because what we're discovering from the last 24 hours is that uh, the institutions have the final say over the parties. Well. That's a really difficult question. As you can see, both you can argue it both ways, right? The institutions are, are strong to the extent that the president has his word to say, even though, as I argued before, I personally think he probably leaned a bit wide out of the window. Um, and at the same time, it is, as we just saw, the institutional framework that also hinders uh, change in the electoral system, um, which would allow for a more stable government to emerge. And as I mentioned before, Elections in three months or elections in six months, it will have most likely the exact same situation. Apart from that, the country is losing more time to do necessary reforms. All right. Uh, you mentioned uh, the president leaning out uh, far outside of the window. Criticism there from Famke Grommuller. Uh, France's president, though, he doesn't see it that way. Emmanuel Macron weighing in earlier. I want to reiterate, in view of our relationship, my friendship and support for President Mattarella, who has an essential task to carry out, ensuring the institutional and democratic stability of his country, which he's doing with great courage and a great sense of responsibility. Manlio Di Stefano, your reaction? I think that President Macron, with all the respect, doesn't know that Italy is a, a parliamentarian republic. So uh, how can you say that President Mattarella was responsible when he acted outside this prerogative given by the Constitution? I mean, this, this makes no sense. So I would say, uh, uh, react, reacting to what was said before, that the problem of having technical uh, uh, governments is not just the electoral law. Because in this case, the majority in the parliament was found. So a uh, five-star movement plus Lega Nord was able to create a government. And in any case, this electoral law was voted by the, all the parties but the five-star movement. We were the only voting against. So it's, it's useless to say that we had to create a new electoral law uh, if in the parliament you had the same party that has done this last one that is inconstitutional. So what the Italian people want now is to have a government able to do the reforms that they need. The numbers are there in parliament. There, are, there is a majority. As we said today, we will act in the, com in the, com in the committees to create our, uh, to, to apply our reforms starting from parliament, because we have the number to do it, even if the government is the Cotarelli one. And at the end of the day, the, you will see how the uh, majority on par in the parliament is stable, is created, and it will work. Yeah, Josephine Nikena, your reaction to what you've just heard there from Manlio Di Stefano, who's saying he won't consider it a caretaker legislature and that the Five Star Movement will be working to push through legislation. Well, I think that's an important thing to show the Italian people what they actually stand for. Uh, are they committed to what they say they are? What would be the impact, for example, of introducing a universal guaranteed income? 
uh, as the Five Star Movement have promised as the centrepiece of their proposals. But I, I think another point that needs to be made here, Francois, is maybe President Mattarella just didn't like the attitude of the Five Star Movement and the League. Were they too feisty? They were certainly pretty aggressive in their language, in the way they took the president on. And nobody's really talking about that. Was it really the old guard versus the new guard? And he really just didn't like what he was dealing with. Didn't like what he was dealing with. But uh, when you hear France's President Emmanuel Macron, as we just did, praise Mattarella's great sense of responsibility, how will Italian voters take that? Well, I, I think uh, people out here are divided. People, uh, some people think President Sergio Mattarella is a hero. Others think he's a villain. Uh, people have been tweeting there's been a coup d'etat and uh, there have been death threats against President Mattarella today that the police are investigating on social media. So the passion and the anger is running high and Luigi Di Maio and other politicians are calling for protests on the street uh, this Saturday. So that would be a real indication of how people really feel and whether they do want to push ahead with the sorts of changes that Five Star and the League have been proposing. Uh, the, the, it's, by the way, it's also the leader of France's far right, Marine Le Pen, who sits with Mr. Salvini in the European Parliament. Her party sits with Mr. Salvini. She, too, has called what the, the events of the past 24 hours a coup d'etat. Uh, again, is this going to make this a, a fight between Brussels and the Italian people? This is a, this is a situation is a very complicated because Italy... Uh, lose, uh, as many of they lose the political good way. We are in all the time the coup d'etat permanent. It's not only now. We, we, our institution, the crisis of the institution, monetary, political, uh, government, president, because the system is old and they don't find a, a majority in parliament to change really the system. I said all the time this because uh, the, the the answer is the the problem that we have after Berlusconi. We are all the time, all the time in crisis, crisis, crisis. And uh, Italy, 2,300 million euro, more than one year of uh, PIB uh, of GDP. Absolutely, yeah. eight million poor people. Fifth, uh, uh, forty-eight percent of people win 21,000 for a year, for 21,000 euro every year. It's a very difficult situation. Italy spend every year 400 million to pay the interest of the debt. But isn't then a recipe for disaster for the president to be naming a, a man whose nickname is Scissors because uh, of his uh, budget cutting uh, to be the, the caretaker uh, prime minister? I think that <laughs> yes, the positive answer. I don't, I'm not economist, say so will be uh, jurist. But I think uh, at the moment these are the only answer possible for Europe to give the guarantee and to because all people is totally scared, uh, was scared for the new for this kind of government was very dangerous for Europe. You mentioned Silvio Berlusconi. He had been barred from running the last time around. Now he can. Will that? Will he? Could he make a comeback still? Uh, all is possible in Italy. Italy is a comedia de latte. And uh, uh, I think Berlusconi uh, is, uh, stand up in the morning and think one thing to become another time uh, president of the council. This is, uh, this is I know, uh, I, have the, I spent a little bit of time in the past. Uh, now it's very old. I want to say uh, it's very complicated to speak uh, 10 minutes normally with Berlusconi. Uh, but uh, all people in Italy, many people, 50 now possible 20% of Italy um, like uh, have a, a really love for Berlusconi because of this personality. And the old people say that when Berlusconi was the president of the council was the moment, okay, some critical people from uh, Europe, etc. But uh, Italy was at the moment very peculiar. And uh, it's for that they try uh, to found a new Cavaliere, one person, they give a new light, is the big problem because the personality, Salvini, Di Maio, 
they are not uh, a very uh, special person because the limit or quality of study is very uh, cheap. They don't have uh, any experience um, for um, personal job, professional. They are not a people. They give a message for the new Italy. If necessary, then Italy found also one person uh, as Macron, uh, this personality, they give a new, um, new way. Two situation, election, and one person, the representative. Are you saying 31-year-old Luigi Di Maio is not the new way? No, it's not the way, because uh, this is a product of the media. If you know uh, the problem of the five star, when they born, they born about five idea of was the water for all people, public water. You remember the second, the, the Wi-Fi for all people was not a political uh, philosophy or project for Italy. Manlio Di Stefano, are you scared of the return of Silvio Berlusconi? I cannot be scared of the return of a condemned for uh, fraud uh, that paid mafia for 20 years, because people already know that he, is, uh, he was paying mafia, so I think that they will never vote him again. I cannot be scared of a guy like this. I prefer to look at future and to see how we can change this country with the good people and honest people and uh, uh, educated people like we have in our uh, political uh, uh, party and when I say when I listen to people that have defended the Silvio Berlusconi for a lot of time saying that we are not an educated party and Di Maio is not an educated guy I will say to to everyone that the Five Star Movement is the party in the history of the Italian Republic with the highest number of people graduated people more than 83 percent so uh, stop saying fake news I mean People understood already that the storytelling is always engaged with trying to change the status quo. And we are those people that are trying to fix the problem that we have in Italy and bring this country to a new sparkling future. Famke Cromolo, let me just, just bring in like Let me, let me bring in Famke Cromolo because we're, we're we almost out of time here. Famke, uh, you, you heard there uh, uh, Carlo Alberto talk about it being, you know, commedia dell'arte, you know, the, the, in Italy, we're used to crises. Uh, should Europe worry? Yes, to the extent that it's this is a protect, protracted and ongoing situation, which has been going on for some time and is now set to continue to to uh, to continue to happen. And if you look at, for example, uh, French President Macron's plans on Eurozone reform, uh, that has just gotten much more difficult indirectly because of the Italians, because I believe that the Germans will actually use this situation to argue, um, see with a situation like Italy, we cannot commit to further Eurozone reform. And Macron's already said, see, because of the situation in Italy, we have to go faster. Which is right. And some German economists are arguing this as well. But in the context where the German population is, has been and will always be reluctant to further uh, integration of the Eurozone, this is exactly the argument that politicians need um, in order to prove their point, the German point. And so for Macron, maybe he has a window of opportunity which is now better than it will ever be certainly but it's still not great and the maximum that they will be able to do is baby steps uh, which is certainly better than nothing but uh, the problem now for him is for his political ambition on the eurozone is that germany can use this argument and and just one word because we're out of time will it does the italy crisis help or hurt it might call in that respect it makes his political plans much more difficult. Much more difficult. We're going to leave it there. I want to thank you, Famke Krummler. I want to thank as well Carlo Alberto Bruza, Manlio Di Stefano, and Josephine McKenna for being with us from Rome. Stay with us. Media yeah. Watch is next. And we say hello to uh, Emma James. Hi there. I heard Italians today employ the term uh, minestrone, like the soup. <laughs>
<laughs> to, to describe the, the mess that they're in. Okay. As they put it. Okay. I quite like minestrone soup, so, so I'm not right. sure that that's entirely <laughs> fitting. But I suppose it does have a bit of everything thrown in there. Um, everyone is very much taking to social media, uh, making their voices heard because they feel really they've been their electoral voice has been rather stolen away from them. Uh, this is a hashtag that's gaining prominence uh, on Twitter in particular. Uh, it means my vote matters, and people are posting it along with the Italian flag, uh, largely because the uh, leader of the Five Star Movement, Luigi Di Maio, um, actually called on people to use the flag, use the hashtag, and he wants there to be uh, protests across the country on June the 2nd, which is a national holiday. So it's very likely that we're going to see uh, a pretty good turnout for protests arranged on that particular day. Um, the idea that democracy has been trampled is certainly being echoed here in Il Fatto Quotidiano. Uh, it says, uh, Conte torpedoed, enter Cotter. Um, King Sergio blows it all up. Of course, that is the president, Sergio Mattarella, not how we are used to seeing him, of course. And they talk about this being really an institu institutional crisis, the like of which we've never seen before. Um, now, the theme continues on their website as well with this uh, article. Uh, the image there has a gentleman holding a sign saying, um, sovereignty, so sovereignty belongs to the people. Um, but this writer says that this time uh, the Italians will not easily forget what has happened here because they say that often Italians forget about these things that happened to them but he says not mm. this time um, he's not really blaming anyone in particular for what's happened but he does say the real victim is popular representation because basically everyone else has been taken into consideration Europe Brussels Germany France but not the Italian the citizens who have been voting exactly that uh, taking a look at the Economist, they're talking about this too uh, using the subheading they're stillborn uh, in reference to Italy's new government because it really didn't uh, survive beyond birth. Um, th what they're asking in particular is, is it legitimate for the president to override the prime minister in terms of his choice of finance minister? Now they say the president, yes, appoints the prime minister, but then on his proposal, the ministers. So is it actually right um, that he goes against the will of the prime minister who's mm. chosen those ministers? Um, they also talk about the two different competing conspiracy theories doing the round which is one that the president is acting in Europe's interest, not Italy's, and that seems to be certainly the most thing that most people are saying. Um, but also some people asking, did Giuseppe Conte think that by doing this he could actually force a snap election and maybe win a stronger majority. Um, so that's an interesting one to look at. Everyone certainly has an opinion on this. Lots of people saying things like, everyone on my timeline has suddenly become an expert in Italy's constitution. This gentleman as well. Uh, last week, Italian politics is far too hard to understand for us abroad. Today, here's my opinion on Italy's <laughs> constitutional crisis. Uh, and it does seem like everyone suddenly is an expert on all these matters. Um, looking elsewhere. I mean, this is a, a gentleman in the UK who um, certainly is buying into the conspiracy theories. Look at the EU. Their fingerprints are all over this. What a joke. Europeans be warned. Dark forces at work. Um, now, with the use of the word Ital exit, not exactly rolling off the tongue, but certainly it is being used. Yeah, Unsurprisingly, Mr. Brexit has waded in on this one, Nigel Farage. Italian voters will be furious that the establishment is blocking new ministers, time for more elections and bigger votes. But of course, it isn't the voices in the UK that matter, certainly not Nigel Farage. It is what is coming out of Italy. Now, Matteo Salvini, uh, the leader of the Northern League, has tweeted this seemingly already in full campaign mode. There with the bankers and the powerful we are with the Italians. All right, we'll have to leave it there. I want to thank you, uh, Emma James. I want to thank our panel once again. Thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate.